Packers were here yesterday and talked a little bit about your running with the ball. I mean, you said it's obviously you're very, very competitive and you want to run the ball, but there's a fine line between being too competitive and smart and what you're doing. I mean, which, which side, I guess, the competitive side takes over? Yes, sir. I think I do a better job of yeah, just um, affecting myself. I uh, do that first sideline hit. Just gotta get out of bounds. I mean, it's just so hard when the first down's right there. Um, just hard for me to run out of bounds. Uh, just, just my mentality. Um, whether it's you know, just growing up, like I said, just having that edge, or you know, watching Sam do it here. Sam, never, you never saw Sam run out of bounds unless um, the first down was near. So, need to do a better job. But at the same time, I'm gonna leave it all out there. I'm not going to change that. Just uh, like you said, I got to do a better job of uh, knowing when to get down. Did you get the ball in your Sam's game uh, on Sunday? Yeah, we got out of here about six. So uh, I checked the score where I come out of practice. It was 21 to three. Uh, not looking good. And obviously, they turned it around and uh, watched the whole second half. Um, it was fun to watch. Not surprised you what he was doing, though, right? No, no never that. Um, I mean, it's three and an NFL starter. I mean, he's proved it. You know, wherever he's gone, he's changed, changed the program. So. You know, I don't expect anything from, from him. The way he prepares, the way he goes about it, hands himself. You know, I think um, he's putting the NFL notice. Were those were those two of the harder or three of the harder hits you've taken? The app, the game, the hit at the end of the app game on the two point run. Yeah. And then, like you said, the start. I think it was five plays in against Minnesota, and then there was another one where the lineman laying on you. Like were those some of the harder hits you've taken? You know. Oh. Uh -huh. I'm sure you know you always have some hits you know from the end that you remember the next day um, and stuff that you know you get in there and um, treat your body but I can't really give you power rankings of the hard hits but you know, I'm definitely uh, I've taken some throughout the years but uh, sometimes it's part of the game it's part of the position um, that I play you got to hang in there and see guys on Sundays taking hits um, um, guys across the college football taking hits and, you know we're always the ones going on the highlight film for getting blown up and, yeah. and smacked and uh, I'm sure you've seen. A lot of that, so I definitely think that first one on the sideline was I could have done a better job of not avoiding kind of a uh, just a cluster of, of big dudes trying to trying to take my head off. But uh, yeah, I definitely uh, woke up um, on Sunday morning and felt that one. Of course, uh, the goal of every week is you know winning every you know winning every week essentially. With conference play starting up, does anything kind of you know change as far as an you know, urgency or, or anything like that? Just knowing that you know it's a uh, Somewhat of a race to Charlotte. Yeah, I think it's just a, a kind of a, a new scenario with the, the no division. You know, every every game um, you know, in the ACC, every opponent, you know, Pitt would be on our side, on our side anyway. But um, you know, it's, it's kind of a tone setter. You know, Pitt, like Coach Brown's been, pre been preaching, uh, Pitt's the tough kind of have the tough uh, personality of the, of the ACC and uh, you know the the, the dual lecture stuff and um, hit you hard and um, try to do the little you know extra stuff to get you riled up. So. Um, yeah, it's another opportunity to set the tone like South Carolina was for our season, but this is kind of another op opportunity to set the tone for ACC play. Craig, you've been very clear that you'll do whatever it takes to win in terms of the app safety. You know, you were you run basically with a run heavy offense, but you guys came out of halftime with a you know, pass heavy approach. I'm curious, kind of, as much as you want to do whatever it takes to win, how much excitement do you feel when it's clearly going to be on your shoulders that we're going to lean on the pass full of forward? Yes, sir. Um, I think you know, establishing the run and run the football every week is, is our goal. Uh, I wouldn't say um, that we're going into the, into the game expecting you know, for me to throw 400 yards every game, and we're not going into the game expecting you know, to run for 300 yards. We're trying to find a even balance, and at the same time, it's a lot of what the defense is doing. So um, it's to try to stop the run. And we have some backs that are making big plays, and um, Amari on the British, and, and Caleb, they're all running great. So. Uh, Make stuff on the defense. So we're just kind of gauging it based on how we think they're going to play us and uh, just in the, in the game and then taking it from there. And, um, I think Coach Lindsay and, and the office of the staff did a nice job of you know, not, not uh, being married to one thing and uh, just adjusting how they're playing us and uh, letting it go. Max said yesterday, I guess you guys only ran the ball one time in the third quarter. Really? Yeah, you know, that it was all basically you guys not running into heavy boxes and start yeah. throwing it. Kind of how did you feel in that third quarter when? You guys had a, a bumpy stretch early where you weren't getting the ball off, but I mean, where you're able to throw the ball you know, consistently going downfield with attempts over and over again, it seemed like you got a really comfortable spot. Yes, sir. Yeah, you kind of get in the groove there. Um, that's the great thing about you know having guys around me and, and protecting well and you kind of getting the rhythm. And uh, once you move the ball, you know, however we move the ball, once we go up tempo, uh, we got some up tempo plays that 
Um, you know, I can make some, some different, you know, we can throw away over on it. And so it makes it tough on the defense. Um, we try to catch them subbing and um, we felt like the third down was best to go fast and, and throw the rock and uh, it was working. So we kept, we kept up on uh, moving the ball well, so we didn't want to change that. So Drake, right now you won't have, I think it's the second highest third down conversion percentage in the country. Really? What, what is working so well for you all on the third down? How, how is it that you all are able to execute that at such a high level? Yeah, I think it's big. Coach, you know, Coach Lindsey always preaches it, and Coach Brown preaches, you know, uh, converting on third down and, um, you know, getting off the field for the defense on third down. Um, but I think one of the biggest things, you know, for me is uh, Coach Brown's, you know, like to go for it on fourth down once we get across, um, whether it's the 40 or the 50. So just kind of that, that new approach of, you know, taking what they give me, you know, checking it down or, or getting four or five yards and having them run for the first. Um, at the same time, I, I like to say, you know, I feel like pretty confident. Um, whether down or distance, I think we had some third and 12s, we had some third and 11s. And, some long third downs, um, the ball in my hands, and you know, studying film throughout the week and, and getting protection right, I feel pretty good. Um, we had a good chance. Now, just about a second to look at your stuff from Saturday's game. How did Nate's presence impact what the defense was doing? Do you think it's going to make the offense's job easier moving forward with just what he's able to do? I think I think it's going to make everybody's job easier. I think it's going to open up some uh, some some. Uh, so one-on-one -on -one opportunities for, for guys on the outside, and uh, you know those you know kind of sneak the tight ends in there. They made some big plays on Saturday, so uh, I think that position, you know, Kobe's been in that position a little bit, um, that slot position, and, and same with Nate, just try to mix them up and, and get them all in there, um, and kind of make it um, hard for defense to, to realize where Nate's at or where Kobe's at, or oh, hey Bryson and Kamari are in, or hey Bryson and Cooper are in, or hey they're all three in. Uh, just mixing up the personnel just makes it tough. How much did Minnesota change the way they were? defending you guys in the back with Nate out there. Was it a gradual change or was it sudden because he was having so much success? Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I didn't really notice much. I mean, I think they, they tried to cloud some stuff. Um, they didn't really bracket him. Um, they played that kind of, that, that quarters with the, with the inside, um, the inside nickel. So yeah, I don't think they really changed much. Obviously, you know, he caught 15 balls for, for 170, so uh, it's not like they shut him down in the second half. <laughs> you, but, just uh, went, you just mentioned Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> Most of his uh, reps were on the outside. On yeah. Sunday. It's a stark difference from the first couple of games. He told us back in August he's gotten quite a bit of work on the outside. Where is he in your eyes as a guy that lines up outside when Nate's at slot? And, yes, sir. And, and what, can, what can he bring to you guys? Yeah, he, he played a lot of outside high school. I mean, I think he's one of the, the best um, high school receivers coming out of North Carolina um, in our class, um, in the state. I think he broke a bunch of records over Kings Mountain. Um, I remember watching the highlight tape. So we can do a lot of things. That's the thing about uh, Kobe's versatile. Um, and uh, you know, he played in the outside against Clemson in the AC Championship. Um, he's good one-on-one -on -one when, when guys want to uh, go up there and press on the outside. And uh, you know, this a guy I trust. You know, if I, I, we've had some big plays together, and um, he's caught a lot of balls. Drake was saying. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Drake was saying. Drake was saying. Matt was saying yesterday. <laughs> uh, he was talking about the freshman wide receivers trying to yep. uh, get them to learn some plays as well. Um, you know, in the case that they get some reps um, in games. From what you've seen just doing reps with them and even just observing them in practice, how have you seen those guys, those freshman receivers come along? For sure, they're coming along. Um, they're doing a nice job. I think, you know, credit to the younger quarterbacks too, you know, Connor and Tad. Um, they've taken them after practice. I see them work on, you know, routes and stuff. And even me, I try to do my best. I'm throwing with the older guys. At the same time, I try to, you know, grab Chris Culver, or grab, you know, Christian Hamilton um, or Paul or, or Doc Chapman, grab those guys and you know, get a route here or there. Um, maybe a route this week that, that they may be in on. Um, so just try to you know, move them along anytime, you know, coming into the freshman, you're just trying to learn the playbook first. And then, um, you know, I think it's, it's tough going up, you know, to pit the night game and throwing in the freshman um, in that, that environment you know, against a team like that. But, you know, we're going to need them later in the season. You know, injuries happen and uh, kind of like the same things last year. Kobe and them, Kobe and Gabo stepping up, um, you know, when Josh and AG went down, um, they got to be ready. Just going over that real quick, when you say you pull them off to the side, get a couple more routes with them, about how long after practice are you, you know, kind of working with them and doing that? Yeah, it can be, you know, you, you can throw one round, it can take five minutes, or you can be working a couple different rounds, it can be up to 20 minutes. So, so I'd say Tad and, and Connor, they're, they we're all, us, us quarterbacks, we're all usually out there extra 20 minutes after practice, um, kind of fine tuning things and, and getting stuff during practice that we may have missed on. I missed a few posts today, I threw them over through them, so I was getting that after practice, so just little things like that. Coach, you, you were mentioning it earlier about Pitt being a hard-hitting team. And, yeah. You know, maybe maybe a bully-type team. Like, was that reinforced to you? I mean, I know you were up there two years ago for mm -hmm. the overtime game and Sam was running around, but was that reinforced to you last year in the game here? Um, just 
just the way they play. I think you had your hand cut up during that game. Yeah. Like, you know, was that – did that open your eyes? Like, oh, these guys are kind of a hard-hitting bunch. Yeah, I, I, I think they, they try to, you know, kind of tread, play that bully ball and um, have that mentality going into the week. I remember the dude last year at the press conference, uh, one of the linebackers said we kind of did the same thing we did in the league. Kind That's of right. Good memory. If yeah. he doesn't come – if he doesn't get up, and then it's not our problem. So, yeah. I had that mentality, and they say I worked out last year. So, um, just going with the same type of mentality, but, um, you know, trying to win game and, and uh, play, uh, not hurt ourselves offensively. Coach Lindsay was saying. Coach Lindsay was saying last year, or sorry, yesterday, that you guys do a lot of work on scramble plays, like the first touchdown in eight against yep. Minnesota. Like, how how do you practice that? Just improving, thinking on your feet. I mean, because every situation is different. Yeah, no, no doubt. I think um, one of the biggest things is you know our defense. Uh, they do a good job in, in seven on seven and Skelly. You know, when something's not open. I do my best to try to get out there and make a play on the scramble drill. Um, we have certain plays sometimes in practice where we script a scramble. Um, just so I get out there and work on the scramble and getting open. Um, that stuff, you know, so hard during fall camp to really replicate that. I'm, I'm trying to hit everything on the, you know, first, second read, and then even sometimes you get to the third, get to move. So that's a lot of the football, and that's a lot of, you know, what I feel like is um, one of the better parts of my game, getting out of the pocket and making plays. Um, so it's kind of hard to replicate real life because they can't really hit me in practice. So uh, <laughs> in games, kind of just a, um, kind of a feel thing. I feel like our guys have a great feel. Last one. In talking about the catch that Andre Green almost made the other day, Max said yesterday that could have been a breakout catch for him. Mm -hmm. How close is Andre to breaking out to being that guy? Yeah, he's, he, he's right on the verge. Um, you know, he, he kept on, he texted me after the game, you know, I got to make that catch. And, um, he wants it and uh, he's, he's, he's got the tangibles. He's just, um, you know, still kind of learning it and uh, he's, he's, he's getting down. Last year the problem was kind of knowing what to do and, and how to do it and uh, he's got that down. So just confidence and uh, Making that play, you saw him in the Oregon game, making a big catch, so he's got it in him. He's just uh, getting more confidence, and I got to do a better job of um, finding him open. So, thank right. you. Thanks, Thanks for your